When designing an application or infrastructure, a key consideration is that the component in question may fail for any given reason, and we should design where possible with resilience in mind. Those who have actively worked in an operations based role will attest that there's nothing more frustrating than an early 3 a.m. notification to manually resolve an issue which, with a little bit of foresight, could have been architected with self-healing as a design consideration. If we take a look at Kubernetes as an example, in Kubernetes we have the concept of replicas, where a deployment can have a given number of replicas. In this example, you can actually see here, we have a deployment which in turn has replica sets represented there by RS. And you can actually see we have five replicas. So this will be running five pods. Should one of those running pods fail, for any reason and the replica count decreases, Kubernetes will automatically attempt to replace the failed replica, therefore running with the desired number of replicas. And in turn, we've actually created self-healing within our design pattern. In another video, we'll be looking more closely at self-healing, specifically with deployments and replicas in Kubernetes as per what you actually see here in this picture. Next up, automation. Automation greatly assists with speed and agility in a cloud native application. Manual interaction or steps that actually rely on user interaction are discouraged and instead automated processes that provide rapid infrastructure application deployment and allow frequent updates are encouraged. There's a plethora of tools and approaches that can be used to facilitate automation in a cloud native way. Personally, I'm a big fan of Ansible. With an extensive array of modules readily available, Ansible could be leveraged to assist with many areas, including container and application life cycles, as well as infrastructure that may form a basis of your cloud native strategy. So for example, there's tools like CubeSpray, which leverage Ansible and automate the deployment of Kubernetes. Next up, Terraform. Terraform focuses more specifically on IAC, infrastructure as code, allowing infrastructure to be declaratively defined and automated as required in a consistent and reproducible manner. It's definitely worth looking into Terraform, especially if you're active with various different cloud technologies. The next cloud native practice we're going to look at is CI CD, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Continuous integration is a practice that encourages frequent development changes with an emphasis on automated testing, therefore allowing developers to frequently check in code and automatically test their projects prior to release. In this example, we can actually see the code is committed to source version control, shown here with Git, and when this happens, the pipeline is triggered. The code is built, unit tests are run, and then integration tests are run on top of that. If this is successful, generally it will then be ready for review and a release, which again, could actually be another pipeline. An alternative and less common definition for the CD aspect in CI CD is continuous deployment. And this is considered by many as the pinnacle of success. Whereas continuous delivery would require an initiation by a human, continuous deployment is a practice where changes are continuously deployed and released into a production environment. It's important when considering this approach that there should also be a further emphasis on the ability to test in production, as well as things like automated rollback procedures for production. If you're actually remembering CICD as an acronym, given the commonality of its use as delivery over deployment, I recommend that you actually remember this as delivery first, with deployment just known as an informational basis. If you see CICD in the KCNA exam, treat it as delivery rather than deployment. Next practice, secure by default. Secure by default is a recommended practice that should be considered and implemented when architecting cloud native components. 
In the cloud native ecosystem, there are many processes as well as third party tools that you can leverage to facilitate and promote secure practices. The zero trust security model follows the mantra, never trust, always verify. In an environment that utilizes different security zones, regardless of whether or not the consumer is operating in a trusted zone, such as a corporate LAN, mutual authentication is desired to verify identity and integrity without any bias whatsoever on the access perimeter. So if somebody is actually doing this from corporate LAN, i.e. the office, we treat them exactly the same. Where inter-service communication is required within an application, endpoints should consider secure channels for connectivity between different components. A great example of this from a cloud native viewpoint is the cloud native poster child of Kubernetes. If you were to use Kubernetes and you were to use KubeADM to initialize even a small, simple, single node cluster, this would result in a setup where the interconnecting components utilize secure channels for communication. Lastly, least privilege is about providing a component or application with the minimum set of permissions needed to fulfill their requirements. Should then, for example, an application be exploited, the permissions gained via that exploit are likely to be limited to those designated to that component, i.e. what was actually given the least amount of privilege. Next cloud native practice, speed, efficiency, and cost saving. For the flower services provider, Interflora, there will be major events during the year. So you've got your Mother's Day, your Father's Day, Valentine's Day, amongst others. And during these events, Interflora's workloads will be significantly increased. A company like Interflora would ideally be able to cater for such events. It would not make sense for Interflora to scale their architecture permanently Cloud native patterns could absolutely help in these areas. For example, the use of auto scaling, therefore allowing the application to scale both up and down accordingly based on the workload at the time. There are also opportunities with serverless architectures that can be leveraged as and when needed and grow and shrink according to scale by default. With serverless, technically you can scale to zero with some patterns. We'll be focusing specifically on serverless in another video. Regardless of the approach, efficiency is a key consideration. And often if you can achieve efficiency, you can also in turn gain from cost savings that go with it. Whilst a company like Interflora would be aware and most likely prepared for common events like those mentioned, history has shown us that tragic events can happen unexpectedly at any time. And a company like this could have peak moments at any time of the year, re-emphasizing the importance of an infrastructure that is designed from the start for speed and efficiency, essentially proactive design versus reactive. Lastly, service discovery. In the past, there would often be the use of manual configuration for our various services. With the move to cloud native, service discovery is super important. Ideally, within our solutions, we should be able to achieve automatic detection of services. Anything manual, we really need to avoid. Our apps ideally should be able to find the services they need using simple mechanisms. Wherever possible, these should also make use of cloud native tooling for service discovery. So for example, Kubernetes is able to make use of environment variables and the built-in DNS service for service discovery. And in another video, we will cover in detail the use of DNS with Kubernetes. That's it for this one. I hope you find these practices useful and are able to think about them in your own cloud native designs.